Hi everyone, I am going to be doing a spider bead tutorial. This is for the ISGB for the September challenge, making lots of beads for Beads of Courage. And so there's going to be a spider on one side and on the other side of the bead is a web with a fly in it. Lots of fun to make and I hope you enjoy making them too. Here are the tools I'll be using today. Just for shaping my round bead to speed things up, I will use my Karina Monster Shaper because I want to get a nice fat olive shaped bead and those are helpful. And then I'm also going to mash it down a bit with my large mashers. Then I use my cheap steak knife, stainless steel steak knife, and most importantly though is the tungsten bent rake. I'll be doing a lot of raking in this tutorial. And the tungsten is very heat tolerant. You can actually do it right in the flame and it usually doesn't stick to your glass. And um, so I really like that. So if you are using a different type of raking tool, you can use a dental pick or a sharpened mandrel. Um, those might get a little bit hot and start to stick a little bit in this demo. So just have your water nearby so that if you do need to dip it and cool it down, um, that might happen. For today's glass colors, I'll be using a white base bead, so I'm using Peace. For the spider legs I'm using for my black, I'm using Tuxedo. And so I want about a pretty fat uh, stringer, pretty thick stringer for those spider legs. And then next though, the stringer next is another one of Peace. Um, I just want that to be the same color as my base bead. But for that stringer, I want it to be a little bit skinnier than the black one, because I'm going to be laying it on top of the other one. You'll see when I do it. But so the key thing is that you have a fat stringer of black and then a slightly skinnier stringer of the white. And then next to that, I have an encased tuxedo stringer, um, which I will talk about in just a minute in more detail. For the spider body, I like orange and green together. So I have an apricot orange and then also a pea green. And then for the fly on the other side, I have a periwinkle blue body with pink wings. So going back to the part about the encased stringer, here's why I like to use that for the web. The one on the right just has a regular tuxedo stringer and it's not very, it's just globby. Especially when I raked through it, the black just sort of smears together. But when I use an encased stringer, um, it looks like I'm using a much finer, much wispier black line now. And, but I still have a nice stick, stiff stringer because it's got the clear around it so I can still handle it well and make my spirals but it just looks more delicate and um, but more importantly it also because that clear is around the line when I rake through it keeps a nice separation a nice buffer uh, in the web lines instead of just mashing together um, the, the one negative which could be a negative depending on what you're doing with it is it is going to purple out some you lose some of that intensity of the black but for the web I think it looks really cool and I kind of like it that lighter color so for me that's the way to go so to make an encased stringer it's exactly what it sounds like you are just encasing that base color with clear so I have my rod of tuxedo I kind of gently give it some radiant heat and then I just heat up my clear my super clear and I do one wrap around and then I do about two more and that's about as much as I do for the stringer. I'm using the knife just to kind of even out a couple spots that I globbed on. And then you just heat it up, um, get it all nice and glowing hot, and then you just pull it out into the thickness that you want um, for the stringer. That's all there is to it. So here's a close up of that encased stringer. And hopefully you can see that there's that really fine line of tuxedo in the middle that's going to give you a nice wispy looking um, web line but then also there's that nice stiff clear around it that makes it a nice thick stringer so it'll be easy to work with as you um, make that spiral shape yet also when you rake through it that clear is going to give you some separation between the lines and make a really nice web effect okay so now first step when you're making your bead is you're going to make a big fat round olive shape and you want to make it pretty big because you want lots of real estate when you're adding your spider in your web. So don't go too small or it's going to be really tricky to get all those details on. But make a pretty big fat olive. Um, I'm rounding it out a little bit. The shaper helps me to speed it up when I do that. But do whatever you know, method you prefer. So I'm just rounding it out, making sure it's nice and even to get ready to smush. So now I'm grabbing the mashers to smush. 
And I'm going to pause for just a quick second to show you what the general rule is when you're smushing, because sometimes people smush too much. So what is too much? Here is a diagram of my bead. The black spot in the middle is like the mandrel hole. So now I've smushed it. That's a 332nd mandrel that I'm using. But did I smush it too much? The rule of thumb is I need to have at least the same amount of glass as that hole on the top and on the bottom. I need that much glass for it to be a strong, safe bead, for any bead, not just for beads of courage. So now it's nice and flat, and I'm just um, heating out the chill marks that the mashers left. So now I'm grabbing my thick black stringer, my tuxedo stringer. We're going to do the spider legs now. And so I'm heating up the tip of it. I'm touching down. And then I'm just sort of laying the stringer down. I'm not drawing it on and pushing it on. I'm just kind of just laying it down and then burning off the end. And then I'm using the knife, the flat edge of the knife, and I'm just sort of patting down the ends so they don't roll up. And then I'm going to do it one more time for the other side. I get it glowing hot because I want it to, to stick. Um, so I stick it down and then I just quickly rock it down very gently just lay it right on down burn off the end and then I take my knife again and pat it down a little bit and now I'm taking my knife and I'm gonna just sort of while the stringer is still raised and not melted in I can have a little bit of fudge room with it and I can kind of use my knife blade and push it a little bit and straighten it up clean up the line and so I am just going and uh, gently kind of heating it in but making sure it's nice and straight while I have a little bit of play time uh, where I can move it. And now I'm starting to heat it in. I'll take the flat side of the blade now and then, kind of pat it in, help it down a little bit. There I go, pat, pat, pat. And just slowly heating it in. Give the back side a little bit of heat now and then. Um, but not too much heat. You don't want to lose the shape of your bead. But I'll, so, um, and now I'm just going to mash it down a little bit flat again because I want those to be nice and flat before I lay the next stringer on top. And I'll do a few more little pats and fusses. I'm very anal about it and kind of slow. But up in the corner is the finished bead. I did smear it a little bit, but this is the one that, that came out of the kiln, the exact one I'm working on. So you can kind of reference it as I'm going. Oh, here I am with the next stringer, the white stringer, and the one that's a little bit skinnier. I'm heating up the tip again, and I'm going right above the black stringer, and then I'm just right in the middle, and then laying it down, and then burning it off. So I want this to dissect that line. And I'm not pushing and drawing it on. Once again, I'm just sort of laying it on. And I don't melt it in right away because once again I use my knife and while it's still raised I can kind of push it and make sure it is right in the center. And that's how I'm going to make my two lines become four as I'm building up my spider legs. And so here I go again. I'm heating up the tip, touching down above, and then just laying it, rocking it straight down, and then burning it off past the point. It's the same color as the base, so it's just going to melt right in and you won't be able to tell. So I don't care if I blob it on a little bit. because um, It's going to melt in. So now I'm just taking the knife and straightening it up a little bit. Okay, so I just continue straightening and patting it down a little bit. And I realize I'm, I'm very fussy when I make my beads. I'm way more anal than I need to be. So this uh, also I was trying to do it nice and slow for the video but I think I was a little uh, too slow for this. So here I go, I'm speeding it up a little bit. So you don't need to do it this, you don't need to pat it this much. Um, but I'm gonna get it all the way I want it. Uh, sometimes on the edge it's, it's a little blobby still, so I push down with my knife. And then I take the mashers once again and uh, give it kind of a final, well, I guess, no, I keep, I keep pushing. Um, yes, very anal. So anyways, now I've got the raker tool out, and now we're going to start some fun raking. Because I have four legs, but now I am showing you that I'm going to spot heat and then rake, 
rake it over towards the middle, and now it's going to, you know, make it into eight legs. And so because the base bead is kind of a soupy white, I don't want to heat it too much. I'm just doing little heats and then pulling. And so sometimes it does cool down and my tool slips, but I just spot heat again and give it a little push. Normally I work under the flame, so it's a bit odd for me to be doing it above the flame. So if you don't like it above the flame, try under. Okay, so now I'm showing you you could be done at this point, uh, but I want to put one more segment in the legs. So I'm going right in the middle between the legs. I'm grabbing the white and then I'm pulling it out. And I'm going to go around all four right in the middle and then push out. If I go in the black line, it's going to mess up and smear the black line. So I want to make sure I start the pick in the white. And now the last one, spot heat and pull. So I take a look and I'm like, yeah, I want the inner legs to be segmented also. So I'm gonna go in the white on the other side of the leg, spot heat and pull. And I'm gonna give them all a nice little bend matching that outside leg. And so you can see in the upper corner how it turns out. So you can play around with that and kind of you know, pull them wherever you want. And I'll have some pick lines in there from doing all that. So I will heat up again and give a little a gentle smush to get those pick lines out. So that's what I'm doing right there. Okay, so now I'm done with the spider legs. And I'm not going to do the body yet. I'm going to flip it over and do the spider web. But if you notice what I just did, I lowered my flame down and I'm pausing right there to kind of show you how low it is. It's actually um, not showing up that well. It's, it goes a little bit past my knife point, but that knife point is where the sweet spot is. And this lower flame is not going to heat up my stringer so much. I'm going to have more control. So for this spiral, I recommend turning down your flame. Okay, so now my bead is gently warm. I am going to grab my encased stringer. There's the image, there's the done one. Um, but I heat it up to glowing and I touch down right in the middle because I want it to stick. And then I am holding it kind of with my pencil grip. I'm giving it firm pressure. I have it right in the sweet spot, not heating up the, the white part of the bead and getting that soupy, but just focusing the heat on the stringer as I push and working it around. And because it's encased, it's pretty stiff. Um, if it starts to get too soupy and you start to lose control of it, just bring it out of the flame, let it cool down a bit. If it breaks off, then just um, heat it up again till glowing and go back and resume the spiral. But just keep pushing around. And I pause every now and then so that I can then move my hand back further because you are using a lot of stringer. But I got all the way around and now I am burning off the end. So if you do mess up, it's actually okay usually on these because when you pull through and you rake through, it covers up a lot of boo-boos. Um, this one just happened to be a really good, I think my best one yet as far as spirals go. Um, but I'm just burning in uh, melting in the end of it and now I'm just sort of melting it partly in to make sure it's all nice and stuck um, but I'm not melting it in all the way just yet. Okay so now I'm grabbing my tungsten pick again, my rake, and I'm just showing you I'm kind of dividing it, it up in sections and I'm just going to rake starting in the middle and raking outward. And I'm gonna try to go for eight sections, which is what I ended up doing there on the finished one. But I grab in the middle and gently tug. And once again, I'm doing it slow and very anally. Uh, also, cause I'm doing it above the flame and my usual method is below the flame. So I'm going a little bit slower than usual. So don't you don't need to quite go this slowly. But there's the first um, pull, and then I'm spot heating the opposite side. I kind of like to go opposites. 
That way I can help it to stay a little more symmetrical if I kind of have a little pattern that I'm following. And so it uh, cooled off a little bit. I slipped, but that, that's normal. Um, just go nice and slow. And this is kind of like when you're encasing a bead in clear, where you're just trying to move that top layer of glass. I am just trying to gently heat and just moving the, the clear and the black of the stringer. And I'm trying to pull it kind of around the bead a little bit. And not just melting it in and digging it into the bead, but more just kind of pulling it over and pulling it over the side a little bit. There's three, and I'm going to speed it up a little bit. There I go. So I'm going to go all the way around eight times, and then you can kind of see a little bit as where it pulls over the sides. It sticks out just a little bit, and because this is a Beads of Courage bead, I want to make sure if the kid drops it, um, those little parts right there that are sticking out a little bit, um, and they're right on the edges there. So I think that's an area that's prone to break. So I'm just going in, and because that rake was in my hand, I'm just using that to push in. But you can use whatever tool you want. And I'm just kind of going in and making sure that they're melted in just a little bit more. So it's a nice st sturdy bead. But then I don't flatten it anymore like I did with the spider legs, because I like the raked texture in there. I think it's kind of cool with the spider web. Okay, so now we flipped over and we are doing the spider. The spider butt is what we're going to start with. And once again, there is the finished bead, the exact one that I'm working on that I unfortunately smeared a little bit. Uh, but you could just add a dot right here for the butt and be done with it, nice and simple. Um, but I was trying to be fancy and I'm doing some stacked dots and then gonna, I'm going to rake through them because it's a cool effect. Um, and instead of just doing the orange and the green, I was putting um, some black dots in between as well because sometimes when you're using bright colors and you um, put black in between to separate them, it really makes those bright colors pop. So I like to do that a lot. Um, I'll show you a bead that I did in just a second because I did this, I tested this out right before I made this bead and it worked out perfectly. Um, and so that's what I was attempting to do again. But I'm putting my beads down, I mean my dots down. I'm kind of smooshing down a little bit with my knife to kind of help uh, place them perfectly and to help them melt in a little bit. And so there, what I've got orange, black, and I'm doing the green. Oh yeah, there's the one that I didn't mess up that I made right before I was going for that pattern. And then there was another one I made that was just you know red, white, red, white dots and then raked through. So raking through is really, really cute. So now I'm continuing to add my dots. I use my knife to kind of push them in, which helps speed up the melting in, but also um, helps me to smush them where I want to go, if that makes sense. Just like I use the knife to line up my lines, I can kind of push, say it wasn't quite centered right, I can use my knife a flat part to kind of push it over a little bit and line those dots up better. So they were lined up well, it was just when I was raking I uh, didn't quite rake through correctly. All right, pat, pat, pat. Okay, I'm melting those all in now. That was quite a bit of glass that I added. I don't want my spider butt to be um, too raised because this is a Beads of Courage bead and I don't want um, the parts to stick out too much and be breakable. So melting down those colors a little bit. And once again, you could just do dots on your spider butt and be done. But I like the look of the raked beads, something I learned from Wesley Fleming doing his sculptural class, because he did some really cool raking on the sculptural spiders that he did, and it was a really neat effect. So thank you, Wes. I'm borrowing your technique for this um, Beads of Courage style as well. Okay, so I'm spot heating that butt up again, and I'm grabbing my rake, and I'm starting up at the top, 
and I'm just spot heating and pulling down in my excessively anal way. You could probably do this in one fell swoop for this part, but I wanted to make sure you saw what I was doing. Because as I rake through, I'm also pulling it down. And so instead of being just a round um, spider butt, I'm also pulling it down into a little bit of a point, which looks cool for a spider. So now I'm just uh, noticing that I've got quite a bit of a groove where I raked, so I'm just sort of heating and tapping down a little bit um, to try to take that groove out. And I think actually this is where I smeared the spider. So next time I need to be a little more careful with that groove um, and not push down uh, and smear it. So now I'm going to do the spider head. And I'm just heating up a dot of orange, and I'm going to put a little orange right there on the white, but right above the spider butt. And this, uh, the head is always smaller, so I'm just putting a small little head there. And once again, you could just um, push that in a little bit and melt it in so it's attached well, and be done with your head. But I'm going to try to show for people that want to try a couple extra details, um, a couple more little details. So as I'm pushing down my bead and getting that head on just right, I did push it a little bit too far to the right, so I'm having to then push it with my knife back a little bit more to the center to the right and just evening it out a little bit. And then for details, when I was showing my son, um, my teenage son, my spider test beads, he really liked the ones that I made with mandibles. So I'm just going to put a really simple little impression of a mandible um, in my spider bead as well. So that's why I'm grabbing the, the um, rake once again, spot heating the very top, and I'm just pulling down a little bit and giving a little bit of an impression um, of mandibles right there. And now I'm just making sure I can see it. And then I'll show it here on the other bead a bit bigger so you can kind of see the impression that I was going for just like that. Okay, now it's time to do the eyes. And I like cartoon eyes with the white, um, white of an eye with the black pupil. So I am taking my, um, the same white stringer that I used before and I'm just doing two little white dots. You could just do little black dots and be done with it. That works, but I am just adding two little white ones. I don't want them to be sticking out too high, have undercuts, so I am melting them down. I will kind of pat them into place and move them where I want them with the knife. And then I grab the same black stringer, not the encased one, but the regular tuxedo stringer, and I'm just going to add some little pupils right on top. And just one and two. And then I kind of check for size. I want them to be even. Looks like one was a little bit too small, so I'm adding a little bit more glass there to even it out. Take a look at them. Yeah, not quite happy. There we go. Nice and even. So now, once again, I don't want them to be sticking out too high. I want them to be in there nice and securely. So I'm going to tap down a little bit. Also, um, if they were a little bit off center or wonky, I can push them and move them ever so gently uh, and have it have the spider look the way I want it to look. I do this with the eyes all the time. I'm constantly, um, I will just move them with the knife to go where I want them to go. Okay, so now I'm just sort of giving him a nice all-over heat, kind of an insurance heat. I'm taking a look. He's got the little mandible impression. The eyes look good. I did smear where I raked, but oh well. Um, can't dwell on that too much. And now I'm going to flip him over and finish the speed by doing the easiest part, which is the fly body. And so that I'm going to make a dot of uh, the periwinkle dark. And I'm going to do a dot, but I'm going to kind of make it kind of like an ovally dot. Because I think fly bodies are a little more ovally. So tap, tap, tap. Up oh, there he is again. There's my finished one. And I'm just once again melting that in so it's nice and attached. We don't want this breaking off of the spider web. Kids are tough on these beads. 
So I'm melting it in nice and securely, but not all the way because I, I really love the texture of it being a little bit raised. So now I'm adding my whites for my eyes. So I'm adding two dots. One was a little bit too big. So instead of making the other bigger, what I did was I heated up the big one and then touched back down with my rod or my stringer and then pulled some out and then burned it off. That's a good way if you have too much glass, you can try to like pull some off. So that's what I did right there. And I'm kind of now that I've got them the size I want, I'm kind of tapping down, uh, positioning them where I want with my knife. I'm grabbing my tuxedo stringer again, and I'm going to add the pupils. So I thought that my black stringer was a little bit too thick. So I thought, you know, I'm going to just heat it up a little bit and pull it on the end of my rod and kind of make it an emergency skinnier stringer because these are really little pupils I'm putting on. So I spot heat and touch down. They look okay. Line them up a little bit, melt them in. Every now and then give the back side where the spider's raised. You need to make sure you keep him warm or her. And now we just need to do the wings and we are done. So I'm just going to put two dots on and I want to make sure when I put them on that they don't touch at all. Otherwise they'll just um, merge into one big glob. So I put one down on one side of the oval, one down on the other side of the oval. And I'm touching, I'm touching on the oval. I want it to be part of that blue. Um, so it is touching down on the blue. I'm adding a little bit more. I want the wings to be a little bit bigger. So putting a little bit more of a glob of glass. So I've got two dots right there. So now I'm going to heat them up and I'm going to just sort of push them and kind of spread them down with my knife. And I'm just going to push them towards the back. And as I push them, kind of flatten them down so that they spread out. And once again, I do this three million times. I don't know why, but I just did. And so basically it's just a pink dot, pink dot, heat up, smush down, smush down, and you're basically done. You just now just need to make sure it's attached well. So I'm just sort of heating up, double checking everything, making sure nothing's sticking up too much, giving everything a nice insurance heat, doing some fine little adjustments, and I am done. And it's ready to go into the kiln. And that's a wrap. So thank you everybody for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you make um, a lot of spiders of your own for Beads of Courage. Bye!